Today's second panel is of a special interest, a rare but essential conversation. Michelle Sirocco, CEO of the Televerde Foundation and Darren Chapman, CEO of the Tiger Mountain Foundation will join us to speak on human transportation, transformation, ethical penal labor and community reform. Ethical prison labor and legislature like the Fair Chance Act are vital to our communities. Currently, the United States hold the highest incarceration rate at, in the world. Legal and constitutional loopholes permit penal labor to be exploited at rates well below minimum wage, and individuals may have government freezes on their finances and assets as well. With limited resources upon release, individuals and criminal records face discrimination in housing and in the workforce, and often cannot afford education or legal assistance to forge a new lifestyle. Oh my gosh. <laughs> the USA is the third highest in the world for a global recidivism rate or the tendency to reoffense and enter back to the prison system at 55%. The Televerde Foundation and Tiger Mountain Foundation have found ways through business to address these pressing issues and lower recidivism at astounding rates. I have asked Dr. John Wisniewski, Chain Breaker Committee member and ASU WP Carey Clinical Assistant Professor to moderate this session and introduce the panel speakers. At this time, I'd like to invite Dr. Wisniewski to join the stage. Hi folks, uh, it's truly an honor to have been asked to be part of this conversation and I apologize for some of the technical difficulty it seems like we're all experiencing today. However, uh, I want you to know that uh, even through some of these challenges, uh, what we're doing today is is starting a really important and meaningful conversation. And I'd like to acknowledge Jessica Bear and the rest of the committee who have uh, eagerly taken on um, this this important uh, a day that we have planned. Um, you know, in my mind, the measure of our collective humanity is really built up. And uh, with Jessica specifically, she brought this to our collective awareness issue to our collective awareness this year be more proud of her efforts and it became personally meaningful to me this year uh, through the work that uh, i've done with one of our panelists who i'm about to introduce so for those of you who are unfamiliar the televerity foundation is an excellent business to business marketing company their clients include sap sunpower uh, Marketo, many more. Televerde does something really special in that they employ um, women who are currently in the prison system here in the United States. Michelle Scirocco is an, a vital uh, part of Televerde's mission. She currently serves as the Chief Social Responsibility Officer and she's an Executive Director on their foundation. Michelle was recently named one of the world changing women in conscious business by Conscious Company Magazine and featured in Forbes. She also organized and hosted the TEDx Perryville Correctional Session, the first TEDx to be held in an Arizona prison. The event looked behind the curtain of incarceration to show the potential that exists in every one of the uh, women who are currently employed at Televerde and deserve second ch a, a second chance. It's my pleasure to welcome Michelle Sirocco to the stage. Thank you very much, John. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, and thank you for uh, facilitating such an important discussion that, that we need to have uh, as a country and as a business community about um, the topic of um, incarceration because, that, because we are um, the leader of incarceration in, uh, the, you know, in the country. So, so I thank you, as I said, thank you very much. It, it, Televerty and the Televerty Foundation um, it's a little confusing when we talk about it, but we're actually two different organizations. Um, the Televerde, Televerde was founded 25 years ago uh, based on the idea that providing women in prison with jobs training and um, opportunities while they were incarcerated that we could do, we could build a profitable business while empowering the women to build this, the skills necessary to successfully transition back into the community and become, um, be, become successful, uh, successful in their work and successful in their personal lives. And so um, after 25 years of doing this, we have um, really committed ourselves to uh, our, our goal for the next decade is to provide 10,000 life changing opportunities for people, um, specifically in the area of transitioning 
um, out of incarceration and into the workforce in a successful way. Um, and so what we've done is, in addition to our, our for-profit business, which uh, currently has, uh, we have seven of our nine engagement centers are located in women's correctional facilities, uh, both here in Arizona and in Indiana. Um, and we are in the process of opening up a new location in Florida, as well as in Her Majesty's prison in Manchester, England. Um, and so our, our for-profit business is, is all about how we uh, grow our business to provide uh, career opportunities for women while they're incarcerated. And then giving them the opportunity to uh, transition out of uh, incarceration into uh, careers either at our corporate office or with our customers or with companies in the local community. And at the beginning of 2020, we founded the Televerde Foundation. And, and the reason for the, the Televerde Foundation was because what we recognized was after 25 years of doing business, we had um, employed about 3,000 women who were incarcerated. And so we recognized that um, even if we were to quadruple the size of the company over the course of the next five to 10 years, we still would not, uh, we would only really be able to provide about 500 women a year with the opportunity to have worked for our organization. So we, we realized we were being constrained by our ability to grow the company. And so we decided that we would take our 25 years of experience and training and developing and um, providing support for incarcerated individuals and replicate that in a model where we will be providing uh, workforce development centers within the correctional facilities starting here in Arizona and then expanding across the country where we will be training uh, incarcerated women to start with. Um, with We will be training them to become customer service, uh, inside sales and help desk professionals and then providing them with the support services that they need to transition into the community successfully. But from a pure Televerde standpoint, it, as I mentioned, we are um, 25 years that we have been uh, working with incarcerated women. And um, we always like to say we're you know, doing good while doing well. So we have, um, as you can see here, represented some of the biggest, uh, biggest names and biggest uh, companies in the world. Um, and what we do for them really is it's sales, marketing and technology. And it's um, really helping our customers get new customers and then supporting those customers through the life cycle. And, and we're very proud to say that we've, we've delivered over $10 billion in revenue for our customers uh, over the years. And it's really important because what we've done is, is really recognize that it's a responsibility to deliver, deliver meaningful and measurable results for our clients. Because as you can imagine, Companies like this are not going to buy from us just because of our, our business model. The you know, business model is, is unique and it's wonderful and, and it um, makes people feel good about the work that they're doing, but they're not going to continue working with us um, unless we are really delivering the best in class results. And then in addition to that, what we've done over the past few years is really make a conscious effort to make sure that the work that we're doing is viewed and certified um, by others as really being business as a force for good. Because as we've talked about, we're talking about, you know, forced labor and inmate labor and, and all of these things. And it's important and imperative for us to make sure that organizations can be confident when they're outsourcing to us that we are in fact um, business as a force for good. And so um, we've become a member of the conscious capitalism. All of the leaders of our organization um, have signed the, the 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 compact stating that you know we make business make make business decisions um, in a manner that is in the best interest of everyone involved. Um, we've signed up for the United Nations uh, Global Compact supporting three of the Sustainable Development Goals. And of course, uh, the Society for Human Resource Management Professionals, not only did we take the pledge to give all qualified candidates a chance, but we've partnered with them in a way that, that helps promote the entire idea of second chances and um, in and, and really changing the space of, of the workplace around how we employ people with a criminal record. And then finally, we are a global impact sourcing um, coalition that they have a set of standards that uh, 
determine that we are working in a way that is is best for our employees and that we are not exploiting or um, taking advantage of anyone in that space. Um, and so the way that we do this, when we think about how how are we able to you know develop a workforce that is skilled and talented to um, to represent the companies that we work for, um, as well as to be successful. And, and it's for us, it's always been about investing in their success. And so very comprehensive onboarding um, program. And, and a lot of the questions that uh, we get in this space is, is, well, how do the women get the opportunity to come and work for you? And, and it's important, I think, for everybody to understand that it is um, it is a it's a voluntary position. They're applying for a job in the community in which they in which they live. And so we post for a job. When we have openings, we post. They apply. They interview, and we select the you know the best people for the the position at that point in time. And and then we take them through um, a really complex onboarding program where we're training them with the skills and giving them education, and we're paying fair market wages. And then throughout the entire time that we're working for us, they're working for us, we're providing them with the opportunity to um, get additional education, get pro professional certifications, and really get kind of the, the idea of how they can grow and develop and into a career that's meaningful for them. And then once they're released, we have the, the tell or where they're getting ready to be released. And, and once they're released, the Televerde Foundation comes alongside and works to provide the job placement on opportunities, ongoing training, um, coaching, mentoring, and um, scholarships and tuition uh, reimbursement so that they can continue their education after they've been released and continue on the career journey that they started. And so, you know, it's kind of the why is this important? And we heard Jessica talk about, you know, the United States being number one in the world in incarceration. And, and since 1980, the, the rate of incarceration for women has increased 700%. And some of the things that when I think about, people ask all the time, well, why women? Um, well, we started with women is, is really kind of how it begins. But over the years, what we've realized is that, you know, 60% 60, 60 of the women in prison have children under the age of 18. Um, and, you know, if we can reach the women and we can give them the tools that they need to be successful when they get out, that we can really have an impact on um, how this uh, how this hits generationally. And because one of the things that we know is that um, the number one predictor of recidivism is joblessness and uh, formerly incarcerated people have an un at an unemployment rate that's five times the national average. Um, and it's uh, as much as 20 to 40% higher than that for formerly incarcerated women. And what we found um, for the 25 years that we've been doing this and ASU's uh, Seidman Institute is actually who did the study um, and, and evaluated what the impact that we were having was and that's that we have a 91% lower recidivism rate. Um, specifically the recidivism rate for Televerde participants is 5.6%. And they are reporting a 94% employment rate one year after incarceration with salaries that are 3.7 times higher than the national average for a formerly incarcerated woman. And I think the thing that I'm always most proud of and happiest about this is because um, it's something that I experienced myself, right? So we know that um, incarceration and justice involvement tends to be um, generational. And so uh, the children of the women of Televerde are 11 times more likely to graduate from high school and 11 times less likely to become incarcerated as adults. And so um, I've always kind of looked at it as if we can, if we can fix the woman, we can fix the family, which will then have this positive impact on the communities um, where we live. And that is, um, all I have, so I want to say thank you for, for listening and I'll be open for questions um, after Darren shares his, and I'm going to turn this back over to John. Thanks, Michelle. It's great to see you again. We've, uh, on a side note, we've developed a great friendship this past year in working together on some programs with WP Carey, and it's, it's, the work that you do is amazing, and I'm, I'm happy to be a small part of it. Um, next, I want to introduce Darren Chapman. Darren is the CEO of Type, the Tiger Mountain Foundation. Uh, this is a nonprofit that reduces incarceration rates and poor health 
uh, in at-risk communities through community gardens and agri-landscaping initiatives. These initiatives teach practical life skills to youth, adults, and seniors to reduce recidivism and improve the quality of living for them and their communities through meaningful employment. Very much the same vein of what we heard from Michelle in their mission at Televerde. Uh, the Tiger Mountain Foundation's mission statement is clear, to empower communities to better themselves from within. Darren is a champion for social reform and an inspiration for many, and I'd like to invite him to the stage. Welcome, Darren. Thank you, John. I appreciate the introduction. So, um, I presentation and I forwarded that presentation, and I think it's getting up on Jessica's screen here. And uh, you know, quite frankly, interestingly enough, I, I'm one of those high touch people. So all of this high technical stuff is um, new for me. However, I, I'm appreciating it. Uh, I, I had COVID and, and my COVID was a really bad case of COVID. Um, luckily for me, none of the participants in our gardens uh, uh, received COVID. Uh, but just, uh, Jessica, if you would, uh, it looks like on my presentation there, if you could go to the first page, Awesome, thank you. Yep, we went to the first page and you can stay on that first page. So there, there was a page that, that may, some of you may have seen and uh, what, what I'm gonna do uh, because of the sensitivity of the technical aspects that we're dealing with. Um, yeah, thank you very much. The sensitivity of the technical aspects. Um, I, 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 I know this story intricately so uh, I think I can vividly tell you uh, the narrative of what I want to say in regards to um, a concept being a way to break the chains of some of the status quo way of doing business as usual in our good old United States of America. I, I had a young lady uh, earlier this week and she said, you know what, I, I don't see what the big deal is. There, there, there's no broken system. There, there's no problem. It, it's exactly the way that it should be. Now, that, that's a different perspective. However, if, if it's exactly the way that it should be, then in fact, we do have a responsibility, a social responsibility to change that uh, that 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 systemic way of doing things. It, 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 we can't just let it be all right or else we've kind of lived our lives or at least for me for sure, I've lived my life in vain. Uh, so what you see in that picture there um, it is the fruits of our labor. Uh, we, we actually have a different conceptual uh, as John, and, and by the way, uh, thank you, Michelle, for your presentation. Uh, I'm a big uh, Michelle fan. Uh, I was at her uh, TEDx uh, presentation. Uh, it was one of the most touching uh, moments of my life. Uh, as a matter of fact, I, I cried uh, uncontrollably after giving my presentation. Reason being is, um, I, you know, I mean, man, it, it, oh gosh, it, it's just so akin, being in a cage is, is just so akin to maybe a different type of chained bondage right um a, a different type of chain bondage a, a, a bondage that happened maybe in the late 1800s and 1700s and unfortunately i think that uh the incarceration system is so important but however we do need reform thought around it all right let me get into this so this is the fruits of our labor uh, we, we looked for at Tiger Mountain Foundation a way to be very inclusive of the communities that we wanted to serve. And the communities that we wanted to serve uh, had all different array of human beings in a disconnected and disengaged uh, predicament. Can you go to the next slide, please? I'm not sure, and I might be able to see if I can do that slide. Okay, so 
the different types of human beings that we encountered, I mean, when you look at the, the, the systemic way of, of to conducting business, typically the healthcare industry is a billion dollar industry. And it's mostly because you can actually go and get all the different things that can give you the hypertension, the high blood pressure, the diabetes, uh, literally right. I mean, that's that's development. That that's that's the fast food chains. That's the uh, you know uh, drive through uh, uh, real quick, pick it up and go uh, liquor marts. I mean, so all of these different places were pretty indicative of the norm, uh, and and we wanted to do something that could be a narrative changer. We wanted to plant the seeds of change and have those people planting the seeds of change be very indicative of the hyper local and local community that could actually contribute to the end game of what we wanted to do. Next slide, please. So we, we, ha we had to dive into um, wh where is the opportunity? So, so we got all these vacant lots. We, we got all these parcels. Uh, we have homes, residential. We have uh, commercial development, housing development. And, and so we dove into um, what we thought would be a way to bring sustainability avenues to our conversation. So, so planting in those fields um, uh, would take those that produce to the farmer's markets. In return, we get a return on that investment. 100% of that return on investment would go into the financial incentives of working with a uh, unfortunately uh, disconnected community. So we had, and, and from that um, presentation opportunity with Michelle, we, we had folks coming in from Perryville Prison. Uh, matter of fact, uh, uh, Michelle, uh, uh, a couple of those former uh, folks that that I believe even went through Televerde are doing incredible um, as they went through these opportunities that are newer opportunities. Uh, next slide, please. So we have we we have been able to do this um, engagement. And, and connectivity, uh, definitely, as I spoke up through our gardening and planning, our, our farmers market sales, uh, a, a facet called agri landscaping, which we think is the future of how you build your cities, how you build uh, affordable and low income housing, uh, when you can walk out and within your terrain, have a way of eating uh, more nutritious. Uh, and, and so now the narrative starts to change. I, I know for myself, and, and I, like Michelle, have been behind bars. However, um, I, I remember as a young kid, I had all the energy in the world. And it was mostly because that neighborhood, which was called Fruit Town in Los Angeles, had all the avocados, fruits, and vegetables that you could possibly muster. Most of those people came into that neighborhood uh, in Los Angeles and moved from Texas and Oklahoma and, and, and that type of thing. They brought with them the clothes on their back and seeds. So they were able to take something that actually bonded them and break those chains and actually create a whole new neighborhood of just very vibrant, uh, nutritious things to eat. I, I, I never will forget those plums and, and, uh, and peaches. And man, it, it was just all good stuff. You didn't even know that you were a low socioeconomic community. You had no idea. Next slide, please. So part of this, as we go to the next slide, is taking those virtual opportunities and implementing them into asset-based community development. I think we've uh, really identified ways that we could have so many different folks in a workforce environment, what, whether they were doing 15 hours a week or 40 hours a week. Uh, we have admin capacity build uh, and we've had thousands of other folks who've come through this experiential service learning way of getting even more engaged in, in, into their community. 
We've had folks who've uh, come into Tiger Mountain Foundation eight years ago, and they're still with us because this is their sense of placement and connectivity. So we have virtual opportunities, uh, office duties, uh, social networking uh, that happens, um, grant research and grant writing that happens with a lot of the different students as we bring these different types of initiatives to light. Uh, once again, asset-based community development will bring that master's degree student, that baccalaureate student, right back into the neighborhood. And the beauty of that is, is a person like myself who comes from that neighborhood has a voice in how this can work in our community. Next slide, please. So in closing, this has been uh, for me, and, and I love that picture there uh, to the left of your screen, I believe. Um, that, that is indicative. Th those young men, one of them called me from college. Uh, another one now is um, um, first class in Army aviation, uh, doing some uh, really great work in air aviation. Uh, these young men, they get back at us, man, and, and we see their lives transition uh, and, and or transform into something that was within their dreams. They, they didn't always have to be part of a billion dollar prison pipeline. Or, or unfortunate violence in their community. I mean, because it is from within, and, and the, obviously, you know, there's a lot of uh, factors that are beyond, but, but we've been able to, like I say, make a definitive change. Uh, that next picture there is uh, myself and Sam Kelsall. Once again, um, um, human beings building community together. We, we don't necessarily, that's not a black and or white thing, man, that's a human thing, man. And when you kick behind together, you know, you can get these things done and break these different change, uh, uh, chains that have been so uh, part of the norm. Uh, we, we want to actually create this beautiful new narrative. So I appreciate it, uh, John, and uh, thank, thank you guys for allowing me to present today. We're honored to have you, Darren, and I uh, can tell you I don't have a green thumb at all, but I admire the work that you do with Tiger Mountain for many more reasons. Thank you for investing in our communities and uh, what you're doing um, is truly amazing. Uh, both you and Michelle have uh, dedicated a significant part of your energy to improving the lives of those that are vulnerable in our communities and it's so admirable, the work that both of you do. Unfortunately, we will not have time for Q&A uh, today, but I want to thank both Darren and Michelle for joining us. And, uh, you know, I, I really do want to encourage those of you who have joined us for the day to do a little bit more um, to the extent that these organizations um, are interesting to you. Uh, do a little bit more to discover. There's tons of op uh, examples in addition to what Darren and Michelle are doing for you to engage in this community and uh, be inspired by the work that these two are doing. So I'm gonna turn it back over to Jessica and uh, thanks again for allowing me to be part of today's discussion. Thanks John. Thank you everybody. I am amazed at the, the insight that we gain and I really appreciate that panel. I think it's a very important conversation that we all should have.